Well, this is a this is a preliminary video where I will show you how to deal with pictures, how to manipulate pictures in MATLAB. There are different ways to upload the picture, so and you can upload any TIFF or PNG or GP, EG, whatever you want. So there are different ways, but then I, I just we just will go to the fastest, where you probably actually lose lose you lose some information about the picture, but it doesn't matter. You just double click the picture so you go to the right folder and in the folder you can see actually that we have the algorithm in stitching and then in stitching you can go you can go to to this setting so you have 2019 the 15th of march this is the way you read it i don't know why it's in the american way but this is the way you can read it the measurements and then the measurements you can have two sets of measurements that we did that day right and so one way to read this is that this was a musca domestica and you took an azimuth and elevation that's the a and that's the e azimuth and elevation picture and azimuth was precisely at in principle 385 degrees which is a little bit strange but okay that was the grade the, 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 the degree and in elevation was 330 degrees and there are other values, but those are for the XYZ motors, and we are not considering those ones anyway. So that's more or less how you read the title of the picture. Now you double click, you just double click, uh, let me see, and then you just say uh, finished, and then you have here a file. The name of the file is similar to the name of that one, but I will just change it uh, to IIM just to, to, to make it a little bit easier. So I double click there. So now you can explore first what is the size of IM, right? So then you can see that actually it's a three-dimensional object. It has X, it has Y, and it has Z. Actually it has three channels in Z. And you can double click IM here, right? And so you can see that, okay, it doesn't display it. And it's an integer 16. Yeah, more than those time on the elements yes now for instance uh, whenever you create vectors right so you define a vector i equal to equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then you can actually say that you would like to extract information from the from the vector from 1 till 3 so what are those values so i will press f9 and you can see Okay, sorry, I will just run this quickly. Um, so we can just run it here. Okay, we need to save it, so we will save it as, as a test. So, right, so you can see that all the values that were precisely from 1 to 3 are actually 1 to 3. Maybe this is not the best. No. That's the, but you understand that I'm taking those ones. Yeah. But then if you have a matrix, of course, if you create a sort of matrix right so now i becomes a matrix and then it means that you need to say that if you want to extract all the values that are in the rows uh, sorry in the in the columns one two three but row one right then the meaning of that is the meaning of that is let me see let me see if we can check this one here, CLC, and we can just run it, so you can see that 111, so we are taking all the values that are in the three first, in, in, in the first column, the, from, the, from, from, from the three, from, sorry, from the three, the first value in the, in the first three rows, in the column one. So you can always do it in the other way around. So in column, in row one, you would like to get the values that go from one to three. From one to three, right? So it's one to three, oh. and actually this has a little bit of no sense because I can't all the values anyway. So it's just the most simple example I can yeah. take. Now, what happened when you have actually you you have this is this this represents actually one of the channels because if you have I M right, and then you say I want to see everything that is in in all the columns in all the rows but only the first channel then you can see all those sort of data coming 
right? Remember that we 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 said that we said that. What do you mean with channel? Yeah, exactly. So remember that whenever we run size of im, right? So and we define this as variables. So you can define this always as x, y, and channel, right? So an image, an RGB image, is normally represented. So you can separate code. You know, if you need this, you need this 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 trick. You can only run this section, only this section. So Control Enter, and you only run this. You don't have to run the rest. So Control Enter, you run it, and we can clean a little bit this. You'll see, and then you say, okay, what is X? What represents Y, and what represents CH? I call it CH. So you can see X. 960 by 960 that's the name of the that's the size of the image and the image is compound by three channels so where one represents where one represents the the red two represents information that was uh, stored stored in the green channel and three represents information that was stored in the blue channel so it's, so it's actually the so-called an RGB image. RGB image. Okay. So we just check here RGB. Let me see what can we get. RGB to index. So you can see that the images. Uh, well, they will have in principle. Um, I will go to this anyway. So you, you will see that the images are represented by colors, and if we upload any image then again we will create a structure that has it's, it's a structure that is compounded by composed is composed by three matrices but you allocate the matrices on the top of each other and then it means that it, it creates a sort of sense of color right depending on the combination of 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 one position for each matrix so you add or you subtract and then you create color okay. so anyway so so let's see that Okay, so you have IM, right? We open it. We have it there. It's IM, so you know the information in IM. For instance, we want to see what's in the in the in the red channel from this image, right? So well, first of all, we can we, we would like to see what is what is the image about, right? So you just say figure, and then you say im show, and you can see you can see what is the image, and then actually the image pops up, and you can see the image is there. So it's an eye. This is actually the edge of the eye, yeah. and this this represents the facets. So the 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 each of them is in the top. The white sort of yellowish white is the is the reflections precisely on the top of the cornea. Is the, those are the light reflections. Those are the ones that are aligned with the light, right? Uh, these are not completely aligned because actually. As you can see, as soon as you go to the to the edge, okay. they are shifting actually to the edge of this of this small cornea, right? So you can see actually yeah. that's a that's an error of our measurement also. Yeah, like over here, like the light is completely aligned, and then you go. Start so you going. can see, oh, this is not so clear, yeah. but you can see that this one that is towards the center is really centered with respect to this cornea but as soon as you go to the sides start you can see it start switching so that's why it's not good to take as a reference information that is on the edge because it fades away and so that's why we assume that the eye is locally is flat locally but once you go to the edge then it becomes distorted it becomes more ellipsoidal and then information is not so clear now there is another really important information here. So you can see these facets, right? They have a different coloration around the the light reflection, and that coloration is because those facets actually are the ones looking at the camera in a really perpendicular way, 90 degrees. They are really aligned with respect to the camera, 90 degrees with respect to the plane. Yeah. And then it means that the light traveled. Through directly through the through the rhabdom and all the way to the tapetum to the bottom of the hematidium and then it bounced back. It came back. It means that these ones, as you can see, it fades away a little bit. These ones are the ones that are actually 
are really perpendicular. And this is the so-called pseudopupil. It's not the deep pseudopupil because we are looking at the pseudopupil at the cornea level. But once we move the eye up and down, you will see how this takes shape, the shape of the of the sep of the seven receptors, six to se se seven receptors. The number seventh is not always activated at once; takes some time. But at least six receptors are there. But it's not so clear from this picture, but it's clear more in the paper. Anyway, so but this is you you see. So this is an im show of the full image. Okay. But let's let's this is right. So here is the full image. This is looking at the full image. But let's say that you want to take a look of the red channel only. Only the red channel. Then you say in show you can you can actually create a new figure. Then you have in show and then you have you have the image but only you want to see all the information that is in X, all the information that is in Y Sorry, in Y, but only you want to see channel one, right? Right. So a picture will always show me X, Y. Yes. And depending on how many channels it has, yes. one, two, or three. If I say one, two, three, right? It will show me the three. It channels. will show you. The, it will. It will just show you exactly the same. But if you say one, two, two, mm, I haven't tried this one. No, it's okay. It doesn't work, of course. But if you try only one, then it's gonna be a monochromatic picture. Okay. It's monochromatic because it's only it's only a matrix. It's like it's a matrix. It's just one dimension. So if you if you do, for instance, if you say now x, y, and channel, you extract the information of precisely I am, but precisely that information, right? Only one. So what do you what do you get? So you get that X is exactly the same, it's a matrix XY that has information of each of the pixels and channel is only one. Okay. Right, so and then it's always monochromatic. Now you can also see the information in channel, in the, this is information exposed by the by the red channel. But you can also see you can also see the information, let's say, that we can sub plot in uh in three by one one and this is information in the red then we can see the information in the in the blue and we can see the information in the blue is two sorry in the blue in the in the green is two and in the blue is the third channel right so we can do this. So this is the information of the red. This is the information of the green. And this is going to be the information of the blue. So we do this and you can see you can see that each channel, I mean you can see that here, maybe this is maybe in the column is not so clear. We can just switch quickly to one three, just to change the orientation of the subplot. One three, one three, and so maybe this is the best. So you can see. Okay, so you, can you tell me what's the difference between the three? All right, this is way darker. Yes, it's darker. So it start going darker. Yes. We goes from brighter to darker. And why why is that? Uh, I have no idea. Okay, it's because you know the eye, the eye of a, of a musca domestica, right? And the pseudopupil of a musca domestica. So we can just musca domestica eye. So we can go to images, and then we can see this one. No, this is uh, not maybe the best because this is uh, digitalized in a horrible way. So you can see, you can see how this is, it has a red pigmentation. Okay. It is a red pigmentation around the cornea, which means that if you, the red channel actually presents more information 
in between the light reflections. There is more information. That's why this this gray is is, is there is there is more, way more information here because of the red pigmentations. That happens a little bit also with the green, but also you can see this stain, right? Yeah. It's also because the pseudo pupil reflects light, and the reflection is also is it responds also to the the chemistry and the physical properties of the pigments. Okay. The, re the light that is reflected by the pseudo pupil actually is in principle reddish and then that's why it dissipates in the information that is stored in the blue channel and in the blue channel we only have mostly we only have the 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 facets right? the facets uh, the facets uh, the 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 the, the, the the light reflections on the top of the corneas of each of the facets or each of the matidium. Yes. Right. So that's why we use actually the blue. We use this one for stitching because right. in in from image to image, the red information is actually creating a lot of issues when you want to stitch two images because here. Okay. So the 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 omatidia is here because it's at the center of the picture. That's how we did the scanning. But sometimes the um, then the fa the omatidium is gonna be here, and so the facet uh, facets are actually bigger or smaller or they have a different shape. But then th then but the information that is provided by the pseudo pupil is similar; it's the same coloration. So actually, the computer thinks that is exactly the same image. So that's yes. why it's better to get rid of the pseudo pupil and only to work with the blue channel for the stitching. But that's our hypothesis. It's up to you if you would like to use it or not later on. Now let's go back to this. So you have the three channels, right? Red, green, and blue. Um, but this is a two-dimensional way of showing. You can always, you can always use uh, a, a different technique that I, I really like, which is um, is a mesh or surf, right? So this is in a 3D view, and this only works for one channel at a time. Then you say figure, and let's see what is the information that is contained in each of the pixels. But you can't see it in a in a in a, in a three-dimensional way. So you just say mesh of the information that is in the image, x, y, and then you say one. So what happened here? This is what happens. So you can see how, and you can play and rotate. This is so if you look at the plane, this is the eye. But if you go in three dimensions. It means that each I, so you are plotting actually X, Y, and Z represents the intensity. The, all the photons that were reflected and all the photons that were captured by the camera, right? So actually, if you, we can go to the example and we can say uh, image, maybe we can find it, um, image analysis. Let me see if we can we can take any picture actually. I'm just trying to find we can find any 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 sort of images. Let me see image fusion. Let me see. Okay, for instance, let's take where is where is let's take a color map infuse. Load mask, load bust, maybe bust. Let me see. Right, let's see this 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 guy. Let me see if it works. So is there right bust? Bust then where is it? Let me see. Oh, maybe because you have no, it's a variable, so it should be there. Uh, maybe it's this map is by three. Uh, Maybe it's this one. Oh, yeah, this one is this ants. Okay, yeah. okay, so let me see. So let me look at this very interesting thing. Maybe because I wanted to tell you that this is not so clear, right? So you turn and you see the information. But maybe if we just upload that face, right? And then we say load bust. And then we say that that B is equal to the ants. Yeah, well, I should have add a couple of here. And then the information is there in B. And now we say mesh B, all the information that is in B. And then let me see. Can you create a mesh or an image like 
I thought that was only for materials. No, you can also do it for for images. So let me see. Hmm. It seems that it's exactly the same. Oh yeah, so something is going on here. Maybe they didn't like it. One, one, then you have to specify the channel. Yeah, maybe it's not uh, really loading. Maybe just let's clear all and let's see what happens. Yes. Let me see what am I doing wrong. So it's a map. So it's called X, I think. It's just called X. I think X is the variable. The uh, variable that represents that represents the. Yeah, I think the, the the figure is X. So let me see. Then this is how we can do it. Okay, there you can see it. Sorry, it took some clicks. So this is the same face. Now if we rotate. We see the face of the guy over there. Do you see? So you can see the face in a three-dimensional way, or you can say in a, or in a two-dimensional way. Anyway, so let's go back to let's go back to our image. So let's just upload it and rename it. Like I am, and I was telling you that uh, okay, you can you can see the figure, and then you can see each of the channels. Right? This is so far what we have done. And we can see and we can see the mesh of one of the channels. Now you see that there is a lot of information here, right? There is a lot of information in each in each of these facets. But it's better if we make use of the channel blue, as I said. The channel blue only really shows much less information in the background, and then you actually have only the facets. L look, look at the next trick. So what if we say, let's take a look of the background. So you say background, then it's going to be equal to the information that is in the red in the red channel, right? That also contains information from the blue channel, minus the information. You can do the separations because it's just a matrix, right? It's just a yeah. subtraction of matrices, minus the information that you have in the in the in the blue channel. It will give me channel two, and then. This is just an extra test. So, and we call it operations. And then you say figure in show BK. And you can see, actually, we enhance, we enhance the information of the pseudo, right? So it's showing me now two and three together. No, the, the the extraction of you take the, the because two has information, and you take uh, you extract from from sorry from one, you get read information from one. So from three, so you have you have one. The one has a lot of information, and then you just do the subtraction of one minus three, which right. means this is the result of the subtraction. So look at this. So this is one minus three, right? And what about and what was? And what was exactly what was three, right? So this is sorry. I will show you. I will show you then what was what was one, right? So I will show you that. It's a comma. Yeah, of course I'm missing something here quickly. So you can see originally this is this is one. And then I, I get rid, so I have three, and I just extracted three, I, meaning that I really got rid of only the, only the, the eye shine, right? The reflections on the cornea, sorry. And then it means that I have enhanced, I'm, I'm looking at only the background, a little bit more the background. So you can see more the background now, instead of looking at the, at the eye shine. How but, did you know that if I take Shannon 3 out? Uh, in, in 10 minutes. Save me a seat. <laughs> That's gonna be in the training video. Lunch time. Okay, so what's the question? So how did you know it was going to be only about background? Because I know that red has a lot of information about the about the background and has information about uh, the blue channel. Right? Okay. Uh because because even though the eye shine are it's in the it's in the it's in this uh, sort of wavelength. Uh, still, 
some eye shine belongs to the red wavelengths and still some information about the eye shine is still in the in the in the in the red channel so by doing the subtraction then you really know that you are talking about the information in red that's information in red what we have here in the in our left and okay so this is the basic operations with with images right now uh, you can crop images of course you can say no, i just want i just want i mean the, normally the image you have to read it from zero here in the top and then it's positive all the way back down in x and then here from this corner from zero and it's positive all the way here right so it's it's um so it's the standard yes. that's how it works but anyway so you can you can say let's crop cropping so you say okay so i will define i am cropped is equal to i am and i just want all the information that goes from one till so it's 960 you say 100 comma in x and one till 50 in y and only f and and for the three channels right only the three channels i want the three channels and then you can say figure and then in show what you just crop and so you can see that we have just one very small part it doesn't really have so much information maybe we can do it more interesting 500 by 750 so you can see that we just crop one side of one 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 the upper corner of the image or we can just switch a little bit 750 by 500 so you can see that here the okay so i'm actually mixing a little bit this because it should be first y i think it's longer right no then i think i did fine so y is fine yes but i want to make now x bigger i will just invert in the cropping factor i would say now from 1 to 750 in x and 1 to 500 in y and the three channels and then you can see i just switch right compared to the compared to the previous one so it's just a different just a some some 